That piece was recorded yesterday. I just pressed the record button on my camcorder and that's what came out. And I decided I'm gonna release this regardless of what happens. There is actually something very interesting in that piece that I wanna to talk to you about, the behind the reason I did that. And that's going to serve you very well. It's a new way to practice that I think you're gonna enjoy a lot and discover new things about your playing. And that's coming up. Hi, my name is David Wallman. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping guitar players like yourself find their voice on the instrument, develop it to tell your own personal musical story. That's what it's all about. And that's actually what was happening behind the reasoning of that, that piece that I recorded. Just press record and, and do something, see what comes out. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't, but it's always beneficial to do that. And I call this creative research on the instrument. And I think that's probably one of the most valuable things you can do to increase your ability to speak musically. So let me show you a close up, grab your guitar. We're gonna discover new things on the way and um, let's get started. The main concept here is to think in terms of zones of the fretboard. If I have a chord here in that zone, that area of the fretboard, I'm going to associate to that chord a, uh, a scale in the same zone of the fretboard. I'd, in other words, I don't want to have my chord here and then my, um, my scale further apart. We really don't want to do that. We're going to tie things together. That doesn't mean that you can't play like that, but it's going to help your mental connection, connecting some ideas that you're hearing with the, the theory behind it. All has to do with intervals. If you don't know your intervals, I'll tell you more about that later. But for now, follow along. I hope you have a guitar with you. And that's the main idea. Here is the only piece of theory I'm going to give you for this lesson. Chords are extracted from scales. So let's say that we have a seven note scale, we'll, we'll pick a, a name major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven notes. Those seven notes are unique and individual notes. They all have a name. Now they have their actually given name like A, B, uh, C sharp, and so forth. But they also have interval names, which I think is more beneficial at this point because that way you can recycle things. So if we replace those note names with their um, numeral values, we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, okay? And that scale is only made with major intervals and perfect intervals. Again, if this is new, don't worry about it. Just take my lead on that. And that means that um, if we're in A and we have a scale that is built with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we can take any of these notes and there will be a chord that works within that scale. So we could take a typical chord would be one, three, five. So one, three, five. We don't have to play those right there in that order. We could uh, change the order. Maybe we have one, five, three, and the, the three will take it an octave higher. So we'll have something like this same chord as this, right? But it sounds a little different, but that's the idea. We are ex extract from scales chords, okay? And multiple uh, chords can be extracted from a single scale. That's, that's the theory that you need behind this. Now, we're gonna start with a scale, which is the alphabet. You can pick any scale you want. It doesn't matter. Just grab a scale book or Google uh, guitar scales or whatever. And it doesn't have to be in a, in a narrow area of the fretboard. It can be a wider one, it doesn't matter. But for this, we're gonna try to focus on narrower scale fragments. And um, I'll take a B Dorian, for example. Let's say that we found online this position, that scale diagram in that area of the fretboard. And um, it, it plays like this. You can see that on the screen. Okay. Now, is it gonna help you to just play that back and forth, back and forth? Somehow, your technique, a little bit maybe, but it's not the best thing you can do for your musicality. What you can do is look at that, realize that you really have seven notes in there. Um, you can tell that by looking at the, the different um, intervals that you have on the screen. So we have a one, a two, a flat three, a four, five, six, flat seven, 
that are repeated on octaves higher. One, two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven, one, two, flat three, and then that's for that zone of the fretboard. We could continue further up, but we're not gonna do that. And then just basically place your fingers on any of the notes that you see on the screen. Now, if two notes are on the same string, that's gonna be difficult. On a piano, no problem, but here, yes. So you have fingering possible issues, but if you visualize that scale on your fretboard, then you just place your fingers wherever you want, and that's a possible chord within that given scale. So we could have maybe something like this. Does that work? Yes. Why? Because this note, this one, this one, and this one are extracted from my Dorian mode. That works. Now this one was a pretty conventional idea because my chord started with the root. I don't have to. I could have played something like this. Is that a possible chord? Yes. Do you like it? I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but it's a valid chord. And those notes, so I'm starting on the fourth string, fret seven, right below seven, and then um, nine and nine. Those notes are extracted from my Dorian mode, which means that I could blend that chord. I could, I could blend both together, they work that chord is extracted from the scale. So there are no limitations. Now you're playing alone here. That's really important. You're not playing over backing track, which can direct your path in a, in a different route. There's more constraint there. You're just exploring what happens if you place your fingers there and you know that it's going to work because the chord is extracted from that. And then take mental note. Do I like this or not? If you do, great. Just play that chord that you extracted from your scale diagram that you have in front of you and try to um, create music with that. You play the chord and then maybe a little melodic piece. And then you go to another chord by just placing your fingers and keeping them on the notes of the scale. It doesn't matter if they're planned or not. Oops, excuse me. This is, uh, okay, someone's calling a guitar playback. I'll pick this up after. It'll go to voicemail. All right, so we've got that. And the idea is to, to play some lines and it's almost like hitting the sustain pedal on a piano where some notes stay there and, and create music that way. When you're tired of an idea there, when you're tired of that scale fragment, imagine another um, scale fragment or another chord shape and associate with that chord shape. And add, uh, a scale that is in the same zone of the fretboard. So the more scales you learn, the more positions you learn, the more fluent you'll be able to do those things. But if you're just starting out from scratch, you just Google uh, scale diagrams on guitar, pick one, learn it, and, and extract from it some chords and try to make music. And that's how I created that, uh, that piece yesterday where I just hit record. And um, I just associated with every chord that I was playing, some uh, scale fragments. You see how it's contained in the same zone of the fretboard? And that's how you create those kind of things. You know who does that really well? Jimi Hendrix. This is songs like Little Wing, Wind Cries Mary, and my favorite Hendrix songs of all, actually, Castles Made of Sand. You could really hear that technique used there where you're um, incorporating some chord shapes with some scale fragments in a rhythm and melodic way. Love it. I'm gonna experiment a little bit with that, playing just a little bit here. And uh, also, if you want to go a little bit further with this kind of playing and intervals, you should sign up to the free Music Theory DNA course that starts every single Monday of the week. It's a video course, it's completely free. All you need to do is download your Music Theory DNA worksheet, which is gonna be useful for the course. If this was your first time visiting this channel, thank you for hanging out with me. You should definitely subscribe if you haven't already because I have about three videos coming every week helping a template like yourself 
find their voice on the instrument, develop it to really express yourself in a, in a very personal way. That is, what, that is what it's all about. I hope you do it. I hope you join me in the next video. Click the bell icon too so that you're notified when the next video is going to come up. And uh, that's what I had for you today. Thank you for watching this. Remember, nobody can say it the way you say it on the instrument. I'll see you next time.